These are the practice problems for lesson 16. <clears throat> In this first problem, you are supposed to find the value of the, the measure of the missing angle. And the key observation is that the sum of the angles of a triangle always equal 180 degrees. So you use that, that understanding to figure out what the missing angle is. So in the first one, figure three, oh, it's ordered in a weird way. Okay, this first figure, figure three, you have 72 degrees and 20 degrees. <clears throat> so you're using up 92 degrees of the 180 degrees that you have. Well, to get to 180, add eight more degrees. That gets you to 100 plus another 80 degrees. So that equals 88 degrees. So the measure of this angle at point L has to be 88 degrees. And so the rest of them are much the same. 156 plus, um, I'm sorry, 56 plus 89 degrees is 145 degrees. That means you need an additional 35 degrees to get to 180. This one is 128 plus 28 degrees. That equals 156. So to get to 180, you need an additional 24 degrees. And the last one, 122 plus 38 equals 160 degrees. That means that this angle down here has to be 20 degrees. So using the idea that the sum of the three angles of a triangle always add to 180 degrees <clears throat> to help you solve these. The next one says, is there a triangle with two right angles? Explain your reasoning. Well, the answer to that is no, there's not. Because if you have two right angles, that is the 180 degrees that you have. You've used all up, you've used all your degrees up. You have no more degrees that you can use for a third angle. So these two angles would form parallel lines. These would go on forever and ever and ever, never cross. You would never get a triangle. So two right angles cannot make a triangle. Sides are parallel, will never intersect. Have 180 degrees to work with. For the three angles, you've used them all up. Used it all. Uh, two times nine equals 180 degrees on the two angles. Now, what if you had a, a, a 90 degree angle and an 89 degree angle? So something almost 90 degrees, just one degree less. What would that look like? Will they intersect? Well, they will intersect, but you have to go very far out because this is a very small um, angle. As it goes up this way, you have to keep going out, going out, going out further, 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 further. Eventually they will intersect. And this angle down here will be just one degree. It would be very small. A one degree angle, this would be 89 degrees, and this would be 90 degrees. All right, the next problem is what is the measure of angle ACE and angle DCB? So ACE angle DCB, so DCB, and angle ACB, so AC. B. Really, what's the measure of this angle here, this angle here, and this angle here? We know they fall in a straight line, so they are going to add to 180 degrees. All right, so this is where you look at a 180 degree rotation, and you realize that these are called alternate interior angles. So this angle is congruent to this angle because you take this and you rotate it 180 degrees, it's going to land right there. So I'm going to rotate it, there it goes, 180 degrees, and now this angle is right here. So this angle is, is going to be 115 degrees, and they give you that. They tell you that angle BAC is 115 degrees. That may, makes angle um, ACE 115 degrees. The one on the other side, this is also an alternate interior angle with this angle right here. So you take this and rotate it 180 degrees, it's gonna land right there. So there it goes right there, 180 degrees. So this angle 
they give you as 35 degrees. So they tell you that angle ABC measures 35 degrees. So ABC measures 35 degrees, a 180 degree rotation. So this angle DCB is going to be that same 35 degrees. And this angle is much like the first activity in this problem set. So you know they have to add to 180 degrees. So this angle right here has to be 30 degrees. Now we could just stop there. So it completes the 180 degrees along a straight line. So again, if you imagine this being a circle, it goes halfway around the circle to get from one point on the line to another point on the line. That's why it's 180 degrees. It's opening up halfway or 180 degrees. And we could stop there, but I kept looking at this and I kept thinking, oh, I'm sorry, the third angle of the triangle that all add to 180 degrees is this 30 degrees. All right, so I kept looking at this and I kept thinking, you know, this is not right because this angle right here, you look at it, it is larger. So if I extend this curve around and just look right here and then compare it to right here, this angle, the angle shaded in black, is larger than the angle shaded in blue. And then if I take them, I trace them, and I just lay them on top of each other, and sure enough, this angle, the black angle, is larger than this angle in blue. So this angle cannot be 30 degrees. This angle cannot be 35 degrees in comparison to each other. So I took a protractor. I put it into doseri. I put it right on the figure and I measured the angles. Angle DCB, this angle right here, measures 22 degrees. Angle ACB right here, ACB measures 37 degrees. And angle ACE, ACE measures 121 degrees. So they add to 180 degrees, but now it makes sense. <clears throat> this angle is larger. Then this angle, this angle is 37 degrees, this angle is 22 degrees. And so if you line them all up, 121, 37, 22, they do add to 100, 180 degrees. So this is the correction. This angle right here at this point is 121 degrees, and this angle, angle ABC, <clears throat> is 22 degrees. So page 145 of the student workbook, um, you can either make the correction or not. You can just go along and pretend that they've given you the correct sizes. The thinking is still the same. I just wanted it to look correct as well. All right, the last problem, this problem set. They give you these two images. They tell you that um, to label um, this image on the right point A prime, B prime, and C prime. And just looking to see here, two images are congruent. Um, actually, if you connect the corresponding points, this point, um, A with A prime, B with B prime and C with C prime, you see that they all go through the same uh, point. They intersect with the same point. That means that this is a 180 degree rotation and this is <clears throat> the center of rotation. If it was not a 180 degree rotation, they would not all intersect at the same point. So center of rotation for 180 degrees. Um, and so the center of rotation is the midpoint between two corresponding points. So this is A, I didn't label this, but this should be A prime. And so the midpoint between the two corresponding points, likewise B and B prime and C and C prime. <clears throat> there I label them. All right, so if, if this length A to B is two centimeters, they ask you, well, what's the length from A prime to B prime? And it has to be two centimeters because this is a congruent figure. It's the same exact size. It's just rotated. And that's what a rigid transformation does, is it moves the image, but it doesn't change any of the lengths, and it doesn't change any of the angles. So this length has got to be two centimeters as well. 
then it asks you, as it says, it gives you point D here. How do you find point D prime? You just draw a line right through the center of rotation, and it's an equal distance from that center of rotation on the other side. So that line connecting the two corresponding points, the center of rotation would be the midpoint. So just draw the line, and you get point D prime right here. So then I started playing around with this, and I started drawing several lines. I just made a bunch of points and started connecting them, drawing them through the center of rotation just to see what I would get. And you get this kind of neat design. And so then I took away the arrows and I had placed all these points based on the arrows and then just connected the corresponding points with line segments. And you get a neat design. And I want you, that's kind of interesting. And what happens if you then rotate this image so it's not 180 degrees, so it's something other than 180 degrees. So I just rotate it a little bit. And then to find, um, actually, you just connect the corresponding points. So you really have to think about this and keep track of it. And you get this design. Now, the center of rotation is not right here anymore. It's moved, actually, it's moved down to here. So how do you find that center of rotation? We just take a few of the lines. You don't have to take very many. You need at least three. Connect the corresponding points, and then draw a perpendicular line from the midpoint. So this is the midpoint. You draw a perpendicular line this way. And this is the midpoint here of, of this line. Draw a perpendicular line. And this is the midpoint. Draw a perpendicular line. And where they intersect is the center of rotation. So that gives you the um, a path towards figuring out what that angle of rotation is. So how much is it then rotated? And so you just, here's the center of rotation, and you connect that point with its corresponding point. So this is the angle that is rotated right here. It's rotated that much round, and it's rotated, um, it was 180 degrees, so it's rotated this much and it's rotated that much. So you can measure those angles and talk about how they, what they are. Um, it's really, yeah, it'll take a while to figure this out. Um, so there are some ideas of doing this kind of activity, especially this right here, these two, as a replacement um, lesson for lesson 17, rather than doing the tess uh, tessellation, which is titled Rotate and Tessellate, just do these line diagrams and rotate them and see what kind of images you get. So I'm going to put some links. I'm going to write this up a little bit within the next day or so. I'll put some links in which you can get some, some artwork off the internet and rotate it 180 degrees and then rotate it 90 degrees, connect the lines. Also, show you some images of line art. So this is the beginnings of how people do line art, if you've ever seen that. All right, so this is it. This is the problem set, uh, practice problems for lesson 16. And this actually finishes the entire unit one. This is the last video for unit one, other than the replacement lesson for 17 that I just mentioned.